a supraventricular tachycardia, which as I said, is an umbrella term for several different rhythms that have similarities. The similarities they all have is when these abnormal sources wake up and take over control of the heart, unlike atrial fibrillation, they make your heart go very fast and very regular. So your heart is racing as if you were exercising. There's really no difference between what you would feel if you were exercising versus if you were one of these rhythms. Whereas atrial fibrillation, people will say, my heart isn't just fast, it's also very irregular. It's kind of all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And that feels weird too. Well, these are very regular, fast rhythms. Like atrial fibrillation though, these are not directly dangerous, life-threatening heart rhythms. So like atrial fibrillation, which has an upper speed limit of 180 to 190 beats per minute most of the time, which is not a directly life-threatening speed, the SVTs also have an upper limit, usually around 200 or low 200 beats per minute range. It's not gonna go at three to 400 beats per minute, which is the speed of the dangerous ventricular rhythms, the rhythms that can directly kill you. Remember, whether a heart rhythm, whether an abnormal heart rhythm is directly life-threatening or not is dependent on the speeds at which it's able to make your heart go at. A supraventricular tachycardia will not ever make your heart speed up to a directly life-threatening speed where you're not pumping blood to your brain and you pass out and die unless somebody shocks you with paddles. Those would be speeds of over 250 beats per minute, over 300 beats per minute. And a supraventricular ventricular tachycardia can't physically go at those speeds. So we mostly treat SVTs for symptoms, not because it's going to directly kill you, kind of like atrial fibrillation. It will not directly kill you just by speeding your heart rate up.